Hello everyone, welcome to week two of Stick Volley. Uh, we have some good games today for you. Some intense games. We have the Grounders taking on the Clownfish. Both teams coming off a win. Both teams are also playoff teams from last season, so they're going to be looking to continue their run. The Keyboard Smashers versus Peacocks are after that. Also two teams that have won. Peacocks are season two champions and the keyboard smashers lost in the finals last season. Then we have the Grenadiers taking on Majestic Turtle Chumps, a divisional match, just like the one before. And this is gonna be a big game actually, because the Grenadiers are coming off a disappointing loss. And same with the Majestic Turtle Chumps. So both teams are gonna be looking for their first wins. So this is gonna be a big one. And the and the Majestic Turtle Chumps need to win this. They're returning champs, or else they're going to be 0-2 to start the year, the season. And then finally, the last game of the day, we're going to be having the Metro Madness first in the Lobster Backs. Lobster Backs are going to be home. Both teams also looking for their first win. One team's going to be 0-2, so this is not the way either one would want to start. Is 0-2. But looks like let's head down to the first game. We get the grounders taking on the clownfish. I'm gonna pass it down to my commentators now, Patrick and Timmy. And here we go for week one, uh, week two, the first game. We're in Coolville, Ohio, where the clownfish are hosting the grounders. Both of these teams won their first week, so they're looking to go two and zero. Oh. Hard shot by Justin Corner. It's coming back on Martin Wallace. Coolville defense playing around with it. Martin Wallace about to get a good shot. High off the wall. Come back down. Valentino Snyder. He's always a great attacker. You have to look for him to get uh, opportunities in this game. Martin Wallace netted two goals in their last game. That is a really good thing to see from a, a goalie. Especially a veteran. You love seeing his uh, leadership out there. Scoring a lot of goals. Played back up by Matt Goodwin. He's been a longtime player on this Poolville team, even though they are an expansion team. They haven't been here for all four years. Valentino Snyder hot, high off the wall. Let's come back down. It's going to be dangerous. And it's in Valentino Snyder. The ball's going to be played back up by Matt Goodwin. Hard shot by Martin Wallace. Justin Corner hits it straight up in the air. Defense is playing it around. High up. Silas might not be able to get a hand on it. But he does. Great shot. This is going to come back down. And it's in. The grounders must have done their scouting report because Martin Wallace can't control the high chips. He just can't do it. Defense is playing it around. This could be an easy 3-0 shutout if the grounders just end it early. Defense playing around. They're scared of Valentino Snyder right now. Right now. This goalie attacker duo is so dangerous. At this point, the coach has to calm them down and just say, get it in the offensive zone and just try to score. Tyrell Short smartly putting the pressure back on by turning it over. Blake Moore and Xavier Waller passing it around. Now, this isn't like how the Grounders played their first game because they started out losing 2-0. And Martin Wallace gets an assist. It looks like it was either Goodwin or Blake Moore got the goal. Great pass, great shot. Oh, and it might be another. Nope, Silas Christensen, last second reaction time. It's going to be off the wall. This might go in too. Oh my goodness! Right off the tip of the crossbar. That really could have ended it right there. It's going to be played back up by Wayne Morris. They know exactly what they have to do. Get it to one of their two big, big offensive players. Mort Goodwin passing it around. They play so well together. They showed that in week one. Justin Corner trying to spark some sort of attack. This ball looks like it's going to be out of play. This game actually has two good ones in it, Pat and Moore. Yeah, that is true. They are playing against each other. 
it's uh, some sort of rivalry right there. Ball high off the wall, it's coming back down. Nicely controlled by the defense. Great, great job just chipping it calm, cool, and collected right there. And it's going to be on net. I don't think he has it. Martin Wallace can't control it. He's throwing change-ups and he can't save any of them. We are here for game two of week two of season four. We are here in Eureka where the Keyboard Smashers are hosting the Phoenix Peacocks. The Phoenix Peacocks, Victor Wilson starting it back up in his own defensive zone and a turnover by Luke Shepard. Started back up in Eureka's side by Peter Hill. Look for him. He's been having a great start to the season with great startups and even chips. Oh, and a goal. Is that Leland Manning? Great play. He definitely got a point on it. So, great offensive player for this Eureka team. He's most definitely a prolific offensive goalie and also a leader. Balls played back by Kyrie Burnett. They really. Oh! And this is in! They respond so fast with that. Phoenix is back one to one. It looks like there's a lot of offensive firepower in this game. Eureka hits it out of play. They're going to start it back up, try to calm everything down. They definitely like the set pieces that Peter Hill can bring to this team. But this might be in. Oh, right off the crossbar. Leland Manning takes it away. Put back into the offensive zone for them. Keith King trying to control it. Passing to Edgar Novak. Dax Love fighting for it with Zach Goodwin. Zach Goodwin will win that battle nine times out of ten. He's just so much better. Not anything against Dax Love, but Zach Goodwin's elite. Oh, but this might be in. What a weird bounce off the crossbar. Started back up by the keyboard smashers. Zach Goodwin, this is going to be dangerous for himself. This might be in. And it is. Zach Goodwin scores on himself. That's just... That's just unlucky right there. You usually do not see that from Zach Goodwin. A player with his caliber does not usually score own goals. That is true. Dax Love looking to put it away here, but gets sent right back into his defensive, zen defensive end. Emmett Horsley working to get it out. Zach Goodwin again off his wall. It's going to be dangerous again. But the defense just settles it down. This is going to be dangerous. It's Dax Love with a chip. And it's come back to him. He gets a second opportunity. Hard shot. That would have been in. But Kyrie Burnett with a great save. That was a laser. Zach Goodwin just pokes it back in. Caught by Leland Manning. And he just sends it right back over. Victor Wilson about to start it back up. Goes off the crossbar. Zach Goodwin chips. Looks like it's out of play. Peter Hill. Getting Davion Nolan involved. Emmett Horsley and Dalton Hutchinson working well together. Passing around. Chipped into the offensive zone. And Dax Love takes the shot, but just over the crossbar. That was a... Calculated play by Eureka. Get all the defenders involved, work it up one at a time, and then pass to the attacker. Phoenix playing around with it. Hard shot by Kyrie, and he catches the ball this time. Zach Goodwin really looking to do something here. And it's chipped over by Emmett Horsley. Great play. Straight up into the air, and it's going to be out of play. Started back up by Phoenix. The duo between Kyrie Burnett and Zach Goodwin is definitely one to watch out for in the future. Oh, and Kyrie Burnett with a great save. That was absolutely last second. Great reflexes. Plays like that for Kyrie Burnett are usual. It's true. He's become known for some dramatic plays. 
This goes top spinning over the crossbar. Good opportunity by Dax Love trying to make something happen. And he does it again. He's getting a lot of shots. Hopefully he can cash in on one. Dax Love is Dax Love is definitely um kind of like intimidating the um Peacock's defenders. That is true. They're looking to get get the ball around him. Hopefully he doesn't get involved. And they do, they chip it over. Leland Manning couldn't get a touch, but the defense does. Zach Goodwin off the wall is going to be dangerous. It's up. And it's in. Zach Goodwin with a wow. goal. He's going to pass around. Zach Goodwin chips it right back out. Showing his dominance here today. Ball straight up. Leland Manning. And he chips it backwards. If he did nothing, it wouldn't have gone in, but he chipped it backwards. That is worst case scenario. That's the game. And here we are for game three. We're here in Miami as the Majestic Turtle Chumps host the Trenton Grenadiers in a classic divisional matchup. Ball started in Miami's defensive zone. Benjamin Hartman plays it straight up. Gus Graham. This is not good for them. And it just drops right in. That looked like Jackson Fox got a catch on. Great way to start the game for him, but that's a terrible start for Miami at home. It's Considering both teams lost, this despite it being early in the season, this should be a must-win game for them. At uh Maybe. You never know. You never know how the game's going to turn out, how the season's going to end. This ball started back up by Curtis Callahan. They're playing it around. They really need to get Donald Barnes involved. Ball hasn't been in the offensive zone too much. Here it goes. Oh! And the defense almost scores on themselves. That looked like Rick Sanchez. But a nice chip there. And Gus Graham with the great save, but it's coming back down. This might be off the crossbar. No, it's out of play. Miami starting it back up. Really looking to either chip or turnover so Donald Barnes can get uh, get involved. Tyler Whitmore, the rookie, standing right in the middle as a D4. He's crucial to these kind of defensive plays. Gus Graham... Hard shots coming back. And Gus Graham with the goal. Right off the wall. Great shot. Not all shots are meant to be on net. Some are for the wall to bounce off. That's a great play. Smart play. This ball is going out of play. It's going to be started back up by Trenton. They're having trouble controlling it. They chip it high up in the air. It's still going to be up. They chip it backwards. And a nice play by Tristan Frazier. High off the wall. It's going to be out of play. This game right here features two great offensive attackers. One is definitely proving his point, but the other in Donald Barnes is not doing that much right now. That's true, but Donald Barnes is just so, so good. He's been a, a leader in the league for at, at least three years now. Never know. He, he should be the better player in this matchup, but they're doing a great job containing him. Jackson Fox poking it back. As long as the ball is on his side of the court, Miami can't score, and he's doing his job. Trenton's passing it around. They chip it up. Tristan might get a hand on it. No. Oh, it's coming back to him. High, and it's going to be out of play, it looks like. Started back up, and it's chipped on their own net. That looked like Jackson Fox got a hand on it. Oh, and a save by Tristan Frazier. Great play by Gus Graham, saving that one. Ball goes into the offensive zone, and it's out of play. Really long, going to start it back up. Billy Long doesn't look too 
comfortable in this game. He's really having uh, some difficulties here. Tyler Whitmore playing with it. They get it over. They're really trying to get Tristan Frazier involved, but that's scary when he's a rookie and he's not too uh, used to the league so far. This is definitely a different pace than college. Curtis Callahan. They really need to get Benjamin Hartman involved. He was such a force and a great shot by him. This might be in. Hard shot by Tristan what Frazier. Wow. Tristan Frazier set up perfectly by Benjamin Hartman. That's not what you want to see from the defending rookie of the year. He might have set up the uh, new rookie of the year in Tristan Frazier. Curtis Callahan chips it right back over. Donald Barnes looking to get a touch. Playing around with it, Samuel Davis and Billy Long. Passing it around. Edward Davidson. Chris Nicholson, the D6, is by far the best D6 in the league. That's always such a solid player. Known for a lot of all-star games. Donald Barnes, high. This could be a goal. No, great save by Tristan Frazier. He's playing great tonight. And this might be in. No, it's going to be down by the defense. Off the wall. The ball is bouncing all over the place tonight. And this looks like it's going to be in. And it is. Tristan Frazier couldn't do anything about that. He's been playing so well all game long. Ball's being passed back around. Off the wall and out of play. The Grenadiers starting it back up. Every time it seems like Billy Long and Samuel Davis aren't on the same page. Billy Long always hits it, but Samuel Davis just hits it straight up instead. Gus Graham off one of his defenders, off the wall and out of play. Ball started back up. Off the wall by Donald Barnes. He's come back on his own net. Gus Graham doesn't even have to touch it. Just short, but this is dangerous. Gus Graham with a great save. That looked like it was almost in the net. But as everyone knows, it has to hit the back of the net to count. Gus Graham about to get another opportunity. Look for Benjamin Hartman to set him up here. Jackson Fox with the touch straight down. That's a safe play right there. Gus Graham, this is not looking good. Off the crossbar. And he gets a hard shot on net. Tom Cool collected Tristan Frazier, playing much better than the critics have uh, said he would be. And a nice turnover by Kai Stewart. Can we start it back up? Instantly back over, but Gus Graham responds. And this might be in. It's a goal. Gus Graham. Great shot. Way off the startup. And that's how you end it right there. And here we go for the primetime matchup. This is a rematch of the Season 1 championship. Metro Madness playing in Augusta against the Lobsterbacks. Now, this game is the home opener of the Augusta Lobsterbacks. Yes, it is. First time here this season. Hard shot has come back on Jay Rivera. And he just swats it away. Keith Jackson looking to get some pressure. Passing it around. Max Montgomery. Off his own defense, Keith Jackson gets a touch. Walled low, passing it around with Oscar Cooper. Keith Jackson high off the wall. This is going to be dangerous. No, it's come back. Jay Rivera, calm, cool, and collected. Patrick Williver working around, but now it's come back. Tim Williver shoots it on his own net. But it's off the crossbar with a crazy bounce. Off the other crossbar. And Tim Wilver calmly puts it down. Max Montgomery gets another touch. The defense is passing around for Augusta. It's Oscar Cooper as the D3. He's a young player with a lot of potential. Metro Madness defense passing around now. They have Josh Abolito right in the middle spot. He's just a great all-star. He's always in the talk for that. 
Deep Jackson hits it out of bounds. It's going to be started back up by Oyedele Atumaleng, who most people think his contract wasn't good for Augusta. They think giving him a four-year extension was the complete wrong move. But you never know. Maybe he'll turn it around in these next two years. Keith Jackson passing it. And Augusta's now just working it around in the defensive zone. Walled low. Can't make up his mind if he wants to pass it forward or backwards. Just juggling it. Oh, Udeli chips it. Max Montgomery out of play. It's good for these rookies just to get shots because you never know when one's going to bounce off the wall and go in. Oh, Udeli trying to pass it straight up in the air to Jerry Rivera. Not a bad play, but you just have to make sure it doesn't go in your own net. Keith Jackson poking it to make sure it stays in the offensive zone. Oh, a hard shot by Jerry Rivera. It's going to be started back up by Paul Kovac. He's been passed around the league. Metro had him for a while. And now he's, uh, he's finally back after spending a year in free agency. I wonder if he trained for this kind of moment. Ball's being passed around. Keith Jackson's about to get it. Off the wall. Speaking about Paul Kovac, he has actually played for both of these teams. In Max Montgomery can't control it. It looks like it's about to go in. But it doesn't. A great save straight up in the air. That looked like he had no, no chance at it. And this might go in. This will be Max Montgomery's goal. And it is Max Montgomery with the goal. That's the way you respond right there. He really has to prove that he was the number one pick in this draft. He has to show there was a reason why. This one's going to be started back up by Oya Deli. And it just goes out of play. While Kovac's starting it back up. They really have to get Josh Sutton involved. He just signed his uh, big four-year contract. He has so much trade value to this team. He's just been a great player for so long. Augusta is now playing around with it. Pass up to Jerry Rivera. And he can't touch it. Just missed. Defense pass around. And this looks bad. But it's just nicely pushed away. Oedeli pushes it up for Wald Low. Keith Jackson high in the air. It looks like it's out of play. Here we go. Keith Jackson trying to get a touch on it. Ellie and Dyer, such a smart defender six, keeping it away from him. The ball keeps getting popped up in the air really high. Right over Keith Jackson's hands, Tim Williver trying to get involved. He's definitely the key to uh, Augusta winning this game. But he hits it backwards. That looked like Tim Williver. That was an own goal, it looks like, right there. That's definitely not how you want to respond here. But a great chip, and Oyadeli scores. Wow. That might shift the momentum here in Augusta. Tim might get another. Oh, but it's passed over. Josh Epolito trying to get it to Keith Jackson. Comes back. Patrick Wilver getting involved. Josh Sutton. Josh Epolito. Paul Kovac. Patrick passes to Keith Jackson. Chips it right back in. Jerry Rivera hits it right back at his defense. Tim Wilver slows the ball down. It's Ali Arroyo with the turnover. He was the second round pick of this year's draft. Augusta's passing it around. They can't make up their minds what they want to do, whether it's a turnover or a chip. At this kind of moment, you think uh, they might score an own goal just with how many passes they're doing. They're trying to get it to Jerry Rivera, but that's such a dangerous play at this uh, stage of the game. Max Montgomery passing it back to his defense. It looks like both teams are afraid to make a mistake here. Keith Jackson just pokes it back in. Passing around, it's stuck. Keith Jackson, oh, Jerry Rivera's about to get a hard shot. But it's over the crossbar. 
He started back up by Paul Kovac. He signed on a one-year contract, so there's no guarantee of him coming back next year. This ball is coming back dangerously. And it's right back to Jerry Rivera. And this ball has top spin, and it's out of play. Augusta starts it back up here. Oscar Cooper working it around. Keith Jackson off the wall, and it looks like another ball is out of play. Jackson getting a touch. Jerry Rivera hits it out of play this time in Metro Zone. Now, with Jerry Rivera this year, he is not, he's coming off a really bad season, so he's looking to improve. That's true. Both of these teams did not have good seasons last year. Here's Max Montgomery, hits it straight up to himself. Hard shot is going to come back on his own goal. Wow, and it looks like it's going to be out of play. That was dangerous for both sides. Both of these teams had bad seasons, but it turned out well for Metro because they own both of these teams' first-round picks, the one and two. So maybe that was uh, all a part of their plan in the rebuilding process of the future after Carter Colson. This is chipped, and it looks like it's going to go in. And it is. Max tried so hard to keep it out, but he couldn't. That looked like it was walled low with the goal. Odelia Tumalay is definitely proving to himself that he deserves this contract after he has netted a goal today. That's true, and Wald Low. You haven't seen much uh, from Tim Williver and from Jerry Rivera, but this shot is going, going to be on net. Oh, off the crossbar. Elian Dyer with the turnover. That is crazy. Most of the goals you see are from goalies and attackers, but in this game, two of the goals from Augusta's on the defense, and this one is in. Metro Madness with the win away. What a game. What a crazy week two we had today. Many teams are disappointed. Many teams are happy with the way their teams are starting. The Grounders started off the day winning 3-1 against the Clownfish. Moving them to 2-0 to start the season. Very pleased the uh, Grounder fans are probably. And then the second fan, the second game, Peacocks ended up winning 3-2 against the former second place team. The Keyword Smashers, another team that is now 2-0. But in the second half of the games, the Grenadiers losing in a sad one to the Majestic Turtle Chumps. Everyone thought they had that game, and it was going to be a major upset for them. But they ended up throwing the game, and rookie goalie Tristan Frazier cannot hold that lead. And then Metro Madness versus the Lobster X, the final game of the seat of the week. Uh, Metro Madness ended up taking that one in an almost throwing game. They are up 2-0. Ended up throwing that game almost, but in the end, Lobster Backs are now 0-2. Grenadiers are now 0-2, and that is all for this week. Please f uh, subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and we'll see you next time for week three of Stick Volley.